Hey y'all, Clem Hawkins here. Residentially challenged. Dealing with life. Still working to get all of this stuff documented. Back in the day in San Francisco, a fellow once taught me that he who documents best wins. And now that I got this, I'm otherwise acting ignorant if I choose not to acknowledge the presence of the machines and how they affect our lives. It's interesting and also unusual, but I still trust that life guides us in certain ways, directions, and allowing myself some creative problem solving is what's generally required. One of the things that got me starting to think I should push the record button and get these thoughts out is um, weird coincidences that you would otherwise not acknowledge. And then at a certain point, you are able to then acknowledge them. Uh, I'll explain if I can through an example. I won't tell you, I'll show you. Somebody said something on Facebook. Uh, this is backwards to you because I'm on profile mode and it's stupid camera technology. I don't like it, but it is what it is. But that got me to thinking that okay, this morning I saw a thing on the Twitter. Eric Snowden he uh, reported that the new CIA person was on the top of the lists of a lot of uh torture files or something now if i had a friend in high school that was um worked in the office like i had a girlfriend who was the vice principal and nurse's assistant office helper because she was a good great girl and they felt she could be trusted it was a lot like 1984 the uh, rebel girl that pretended to be all regular um Anyway, if I knew of somebody that worked in the principal's office and had passwords to all of the files, like in Ferris Bueller's day off when he uses his computer to change his grade and his uh, attendance records, um, if I had a friend like that, I'd want to keep him around. Uh, if that friend then worked, went to live in another high school for fear of being persecuted for exposing wrongful doings in the high school that we were living in and he went to this other high school across town uh i'd still want to be his friend i don't care what high school he goes to he's fucking smart and it's also he looks out for us he wouldn't have done it if he wasn't who wants to go to another high school and lose all your friends uh that sucks um i'm sure i would like to think it's my opinion that he felt it a humbling responsibility and accepted the circumstances as larger than maybe he could comprehend at the time. Maybe a lot of us still are comprehending what it means. But what it means to me is, is that in the past, all the high school information was kept amongst itself. I'm just now outside of Denver and I'm not sure. I'm sure somebody could ask the Oracle all about uh, the Google, um, all about how many school districts, how many school kids, uh, what's the total comparison of enrolled students to registered voter kids or registered social security number holders. Um, you could see how busy the system was keeping everybody with our phones and everything now, and obviously the help of a machine back to this machine thing um the fact that with this machine they could see and pinpoint everybody's exact location people are so identified with their phone they've yet to do a prank now this would be an exceptional prank and if you could get somebody really famous like joe rogan or joey diaz or somebody to inspire it 
it would be, it would suck because then they would be aware of our technology. See, um, I'm doubting anybody's, well, I'm not doubting. Eventually somebody will see this, uh, if nothing else, cause Elvis is so pretty. <laughs> uh, uh, what was I saying? Um, oh yeah, the machine can see your pinpoint your location. Now, for all kinds of stupid squirrel reasons. Now, squirrel is the medicine of gathering. That should be first and foremost of importance when it comes to the attention deficit. Oh, look, a squirrel. Uh... It's my opinion. I remember when I was a kid, as far as I'm aware, there was absolutely zero drug influences. Not even, well, maybe, maybe sugar, maybe not. I'm not sure for, you know, I don't exactly recall my situation. I'm just aware I wasn't, I was too young to have been smoking weed already. And I had this experience and it was a feeling I call a quickening. Um... It was almost like everything slowed down and sped up at the same time. It was weird. Um, kind of like, a, and it might even started with a head rush. Who knows? Uh, I do recall that. And it was also at about a time of my life when in physical or age maturity, I might've been 12 or 13. Um, and I wasn't seeking or looking or doing for anything. I was, I think, cleaning up my closet. Uh, I realize it's uncomfortable for people sometimes, and I might have to go back and edit it out. But one of the things I've found I do that people have a difficult time with is I've learned to pause and think before I speak. Uh... It took a lot of practice. <laughs> I used to just speak. It's like I said, the uh, when I was in fifth grade, they said I was ADD, attention deficit disorder, which meant I was too quick for their process program. You can't underclock a processor. Ask any geek. You can overclock them, but you can't underclock them. Uh, underestimate your enemy. It's your first weakness probably why I still talk like this, but I don't know nothing, I do love apple strudel, I got some cheese strudel, speaking of squirrels, I got some banana cream cake, that's like a monkey and a squirrel all mixed together, if there were walnuts in it, um, so back to the trippy weird coincidences that seem like nothing, um, in today's society, in our global economy, uh, it only would make sense that people would either feel the need or the responsibility to centralize all of that. The problem with the current situation is that only goes to a, a very few people's pockets. And... The easiest way to put it is, imagine a NASCAR race. There you go. There you go. There you're talking our language. <laughs> imagine a NASCAR race. And, uh, fuck, I don't know. If I had a secretary or a young Jamie, I'd say, give me a list of NASCAR names. All of the racers, right? And they're in a race. Say they're during the Daytona 500. And you got like 10 or 15 cars that are just kicking everybody's ass laughing the shit out of people halfway through the race the other guys are done who wants to sit and watch two hours of nine uh number 50 through number 99 unless you're related to or somehow you are friends with or you know people on the crew of those teams it's the only fucking reason you watch it right so oh maybe that's why he called the reflection that's clever tripper uh, oh, thinking of the enlightened master on YouTube who was, uh, I liked how when he was talking to the camera, he always called it re my reflection because, uh, we are all 
little lights of the same head of God, if that were the case. Imagine if God was a multidimensional being that existed inside and outside of all physical space. We're aware that an atom is 99% empty space. That's 99% of that is God. That 1% is everything else. It's a donut hole. Or the donut. Or we're the hole. Depends on how you look at it. I think we're the donut. And I think inside of us is a, a donut hole. And on the outside of us is a donut hole. But the outside of us is bent. To match the inside of us. Or vice versa. Nonetheless. Imagine God had a bunch of hair. There's a thing in the Bible about all your hairs are numbered. Um... Now, in this dreadlock, there's a bunch of hairs, and they're all locked into a pattern or a proximity. They're all locked into a proximity. Now, if each one of these was a town, or a city, or a country, or a race of beings, terrestrial and or extraterrestrial, extra-dimensional, People seem to get stuck in the physical realm and forget about that other stuff. Um, so, anyway. Uh, something about squirrels. Oh, yeah, the medicine of gathering. Um, to all my squirrel friends out there, I... Believe it or not, I have literally how many of these fucking things I have. They're cell phones. Uh, I when the first cell phone I got, I should tell you this story. My first cell phone story um, is right about before I had uh, got at Elvis Fountain. Um, I found that the hippies of California, and as hippies, I'm referring to a highly intelligent people pursuing intellectual enlightenment, uh, old school deadheads, and those who passed the acid test saw the undoing threads of the carpet fabric of life, um, decided to extricate themselves from that system, uh, many of which created isolated communities, coastal communities, hard to get to communities with all of their schooling and everything that they needed right there in that little pocket that was protected. Um, and possibly some of those people, obviously, likely a lot of them, some of them, and might only have taken one of them, they had military experience and knew how to fortify and set up defenses. So going into an unexplored region, picking the hardest place to get to, and setting up camp makes it a lot harder for anybody to come get you or find you or give a shit what you're doing. Then people started catching on and started going up there because I met a guy who never smoked weed until somebody gave him a bunch of seeds because he moved up there to get away from the city. Not because of drugs necessarily, just because he was tired of the city. Once a lot of people start seeing it, okay, like the 60s, a lot of people, the acid tests were going around and dosing mass amounts of people because what they were able to see was if you had 20% of the people tripping, not tripping, but have had a spiritual awakening to where they're working towards becoming a hair of God, like functioning hair of God, working together. Uh, if we could... Mother necessity forces us to do certain shit, all right? Um, my thought about these phones were, the prank is, everybody switches phones. And then the computer starts seeing, okay, uh, let's say you and Bob work at an office together. And let's say you and Bob work in different parts of the building. And let's say you and Bob decide one morning at coffee, or maybe it's just by accident, you and Bob like switch phones. Um, then you and, 
then the machine starts sending Bob your messages and you Bob messages. And neither of you really catch on until, like you and Bob say, go to lunch for a beer. Which, I ain't enough. the important point of it is it's, an, it's a routine that always happens. So as soon as it something different happens, that seems strange to the machine, which exposes the machine's weakness, which allows somebody like Sean of the Dead Guys to fucking come in and save the day. Uh, that's fucking brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, back to all the schools. There is a movie called Pump Up the Volume that, oh, look, a squirrel. See, uh, squirrel, squirrel talk with Clem Hawkins and Elvis. That'd be a good one. Um, so, uh, squirrel talk, medicine of gathering. Native American medicine suggests that all animals are totems of a communication from Great Spirit. Great Spirit is maybe, maybe not a white bearded dude in the clouds. Great Spirit could just be that emptiness in between everything, that 99% that I was talking about. Because I think that it, when I say God, if I could define this so I, I don't hear anybody arguing, um, to me, if you take all the religions, if you take, there's a saying that there's a little bit of bad in the best of us and a little bit of good in the worst of us. So I figure if you take all that good and then you realize that most of that bad is good in reverse, therefore God is all that good and bad, like a yin yang symbol. Uh, there's an extra 1% because God is everything good and bad, everything we can all imagine. Okay. Like there are writers and there are minds out there who have contemplated multiple dimensions of actual physical reality in which we ourselves can exist. The Celestine Prophecy talks about changing your life in a way that allows you to raise your vibration to uh, achieve that level of vibration. If that is synonymous with monks meditating they say that psychedelics lsd can give an individual that vibration that normally takes 60 years to build up to it allows it to just get there and then there's the talk that the magic mushrooms are actually and interestingly the ergot the trichome and the mushroom all grow in the same shape when they first start it's very interesting but I see that in a time dimensional way. If you've ever seen Stargate and it looks like water that's rippling, I think the reason is, is you take that sideways and this is a puddle of water and you drip it, then that ripples out. That one drop affects all of those things. When the pranksters would dose a town, they would be doing the drops. Dripple, dripple, dripple. Are you catching my drift? Um, George Gist, you, if you get the gist of it, uh, that, when I do that, that means ask the Oracle, uh, Gist, G-I-S-T, um, George, I think, Gist, he, was it he? Nonetheless, check out, if you get the gist of it, um, when I was younger, I had friends that used to say, I don't always say what I mean, but I always mean what I say. Um, I later learned in hippie talk from my teacher, Woody. Uh, some people talk out their neck, meaning that they will speak as well as infer another thing to insult somebody in front of their back. It's like people say about sarcasm, that it's not funny, it's just smart people making fun of stupid people in front of their back. Speaking of the audience tonight. <laughs> Speaking of our host. 